Good morning, Highland. Each week when we do these little segments, my executive producer, Mary Helen, will ask me what, I, what title I want to give to it. It always befuddles me because I don't even really think about titles. But the title today came to me actually before the content. The title is A Tale of Two Old Men. It begins when I was in the fifth grade. And I was at a place where I shouldn't be, at a construction site. We lived in an area where a lot of homes were being built. We had strict uh, orders from parents not to go to those places. They considered them dangerous, which meant they were quite enticing. <clears throat> My parents had gone to the grocery store. It usually took about an hour and a half or so, and I was visiting one of those construction sites with some friends. We were tossing dirt clods at different things when some girls went by, also our age, they made targets. We didn't really think we could actually hit them. We thought they were out of range. I was mistaken, and I accidentally hit one. It wasn't intentional, but it was reckless. Shortly before my parents came home from the store, the girl's mother showed up at our door, and my grandfather answered. He assured her that the miscreant would be dealt with appropriately. In a very southern, gentlemanly kind of way, uh, he offered that assurance to her. Then he closed the door and he sat back down and watched TV and smoked his cigarettes, which is how he spent most of his time with us. My parents came home, nothing was said. I went to bed that night thinking I'd beaten the rap. I got up the next morning, just full of life, thinking I'd beaten the rap, prepared to go visit with my friends again when my mother called me back in and told me, your grandfather told me what happened. He said he wanted to give you the opportunity to take responsibility for what you had done before he told me. I had not earned his belief in my integrity but he gave me a chance to demonstrate it, and I failed. I was in the fifth grade. But I've never forgotten that he gave me that chance, that chance to take responsibility for my own actions and the lesson I learned from that. This man was 76 years old and frail from a lifetime of smoking and poverty and great stress with my grandmother's mental illness. The second man I wish to talk about is Brent Fightmaster, a 72-year-old prize fighter, former prize fighter. When he started teaching the Sunday school class in which I was part, a group of 14-year-old boys. One has to question his mental acuity in agreeing to teach a class of 14-year-old boys at his age, but he did, and this happened shortly after his wife had died. I don't recall any of his words. I don't recall a single Bible lesson that we had from him. I do recall that sometimes his grief overtook him during the class, and I know he was the first man I ever saw cry. I remember that he loved us, and I know and remember that he remembered us. Even when we got older and went away to school and came back, he would be one who would notice and remember us. He was one who brought another boy to class, a kid from the streets, really, rough kid, tough kid, angry kid, but a kid who climbed a tree and fell out and broke his neck, and it was Brent Fightmaster who went to the hospital every day to visit with him until the boy died. Brent Fightmaster showed me that if you love, you are never irrelevant. There are politicians today who say that some oldies have to die as part of the price of normal life again. And I wonder what measuring stick they're using. I wonder how they decide who has value and who does not. I believe it was Jonas Salk, but I could be wrong because I'm doing it by memory. But I think it was Salk who said that our primary duty is to be good ancestors. 
I've had good ancestors from my family and my church family. And they've helped make me who I am. I wonder what future generations will say about their ancestors, about our stewardship of life, our stewardship of each other in this time. In the Gospels, Jesus was always inviting us to see beyond the categories that we make about origin and race, religion, or even our moral categories. For Jesus, no one was expendable. To suggest that some oldies or that African Americans or some other category are somehow expendable is a failure of imagination and certainly a failure of faith. I wonder if my grandfather ever imagined how I would turn out, what kind of person I would grow to be. I wonder if Brent Fightmaster ever envisioned what a class full of feisty boys would become. I remember them choosing to love with high expectations for character by living out faithfulness and caring about us outside of a classroom. What kind of an ancestor will you be? Have a great day, Highland. Amen.